Hello, this is JF Brandon from Bot Factory, um, making a little video about something we've been doing. Um, imprint flexible circuits, essentially. What you see here is a uh, first attempt uh, at printing circuit board and placing it within a 3D print. The whole concept is to essentially provide some rigidity here and flexibility elsewhere. Um, all we used is Squink and a MakerBot and worked on the first attempt. Let me show you how. So, first off, what is a flexible device? Like, let's talk about that. Let me show you something. So, flexible circuits kind of been becoming more and more popular. It's one of the reasons why people buy Squink and buying SV2 as well. And principally is because they're very difficult to play with. Like, First off, they're a bit expensive to get. If you get them made in China or here, um, they're gonna cost you a little bit of money, um, but they're really valuable. Flexible electronics could really change, it has been changing it, and it's gonna continue to change how an electrical engineer designs a circuit board, designs a product, um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, principally, you can save a lot of space. You can print a circuit, you can fold it, and then get it into a smaller package. Can reduce the weight. That's kind of important for people doing you know, things like uh, wearables or um, drones. Uh, there's a cost savings because you can do roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing, but you can also, because you're saving space, you can afford to do different things with your circuit board layout. Um, there's also reliability um, improvements because you are getting rid of certain things like uh, connectors between different boards. Um, let's just say you have two boards and they're at many degrees of each other and you typically just put a wire and it's going to be never going to move so there doesn't really need to be any worry about bending it just once if you make a circuit board so you could just print that on a flex circuit and then simply fold it and place it in whatever case you're going with um, getting reducing your costs because you don't need to place any through holes and any connectors and reliability because connectors are typically where you have the most issue of course, the problem with flexible electronics is that you want to have something called compliancy, which basically means that there's certain rigidity at certain points where there's components, so those components don't break off when you place the board or if you're using it in any sense. And that's kind of the approach. Getting compliancy was kind of sort of the genesis of, of creating this in-print, 3D printed circuit. So basically what I did is I took a design, a circuit board, and I took a 3D model, and I started printing a 3D model on my MakerBot, and then paused it, placed the circuit upside down, and then placed a little glue to make sure it was solidly stuck to the plastic, and then continued printing. And if you take a look at the video, which I'm gonna to switch to right now, you can see that the component places, where the components are on the board, are stiff. They will never move, which is great. We want that. But where it needs to be flexible or floating, then it's fine. And that's really useful. That allows us to do a lot more, you know, circuit board and be certain that your parts are going to break off when you're bending them to place them inside of a case or, or using them for any particular purpose. And it was fairly straightforward. So I want to show you how I did this. So let's just swap over to the next step. So what I did here is I designed the circuit and this is actually a second design um, and I lay it out and I was sort of using the silk screen to essentially give me an idea of where I shouldn't place components. Um, what I wanted to do was kind of an ex with the second design was an extension of my first design. So I wanted to have a set of LEDs with the resistors signaled from an AT tiny to turn on and off as it goes. The battery is going to be was going to be completely contained within the plastic. So I took the circuit design, printed it, assembled it, and then I designed essentially four squares um, that would essentially be the prints. Now here's the end result here. You can see I started printing the squares, pause the print and then place the circuit board and then started to overprint after that. Um, 
And then let me show you a quick video how it works. So here you see the machine working its way over the substrate, over the substrate. Now notice that I placed the circuit board upside down. And the reason I placed it upside down was because I didn't want the machine's extruder head from interacting with any of the components. It's the same deal with this, like, look how fast that thing's moving. It's, it's going to cross right across the substrate. If it was facing the upside, upside down, that, that would be an LED popping off. <laughs> and in the end result, I got something like this. Now, The problem I had was, and what I tried to do very hard, was to actually make the circuit fold over itself as well so that I could make a connector point using a magnet. Overall, the concept worked, but if you're folding the circuit again, if you want to try doing that, you need to make sure the length is high enough because you can't bend it too much, it might break. The other challenge is, of course, making sure that your spacing is done. If you're actually completely enclosing a component, you have to make sure that you are placing the component, or sorry, the circuit board into the print at the right time. And that was actually a bit of a design challenge because, so this is the direction the printing is going, okay? So this is, imagine this is the print bed and looking down. I have to actually time it right. If I'm too early, the the bed, you know, the component's going to hit the, 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 the 3D print and it's not going to, uh, the extruder's not going to be printing in the right spot. If I do it too late, you know, I might, uh, I might catch it too late. The extruder's beginning to do the overfill of the component, the circuit board that it thinks is there. So I came across an interesting idea um, of placing what I like to call little time cones. And they're basically cones within the print, where the tip of the cone is essentially the point at which I should place the flex circuit. So um, within the battery compartment, which I was showing earlier, you can kind of see very closely these two cones. You can see the side angle on the bottom left. You can see the sort of front angle on the bottom right. You can see uh, one of the cones on the bottom um, top right, the top right quadrant of the top right <laughs> image. Um, and essentially as it's doing each layer, the circle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then once it disappears, I hit pause on my anchor bot and then place the circuit upside down. And that way I was able to get like a functional circuit right off the bat. And this was fairly straightforward. I didn't use anything more than uh, Squink, MakerBot, they used Upfurter for the design, and Rhino 3D for the 3D model. Um, I mean, I think the having a pair of calipers to measure all the components or a data sheet of the components is very valuable so that you make sure that you have enough space for everything. Um, I really want to keep on experimenting with this uh, for light strips and things like that of that nature. This is really interesting because compliance is a is a problem. I've played with flex circuits for years now with Squink and making sure that the components are not going to break off um, but that the areas that are I essentially want to flex are going to flex is it's, it's a huge time loss when it breaks. Now we've been experimenting with ridge flex um, and that's kind of great but the substrates are always going to be different sizes and the fact that I'm also making the case that it's going to be hard is also pretty interesting and useful. Like, there's a couple of uses, a couple of ideas that I'm thinking about with this, with this design release is making something like a, a, a six-sided dice that I essentially print when it's done, I fold it together and it just connects like Lego. And then essentially I have a flex circuit where all the flexes are going to be floating but they're always going to stay that, at that angle. Um, and the components act as the rigid body to protect the components, or the, the, the plastic parts are going to protect the, the, the electrical components, the traces, make sure they're continuous, um, and generally make the whole thing look cool. 
There's other uses that we've been thinking about with this kind of technique. Uh, prosthetics would be a critical one. Um, prosthesis is typically are custom made and they often have you know, electrical signaling or some sort of sensor in there. Um, and customization, 3D printing is, is kind of its, its, its killer application. Other areas, I mean, you can make very light circuits. That's a given with flexible electronics. The fact that the prints are mostly empty air because the infill is very low might be valuable for making hyperlight drones, hyperlight aircraft or aerospace applications. Things like wearables might be valuable. Um, there's really endless applications. We've only been playing this for like two weeks. Um, battery's still fresh on this guy. So we'd love to hear if anyone else has any other ideas or any thoughts. Um, and if you really want to try this yourself, um, more than welcome to contact us. You can contact me at jf.brandon at, at botfactory.co or contact at botfactory.co and ask us more questions. Uh, willing to share you the designs if you have the parts. Um, but like, yeah, let us know what else you think about this. This is a really interesting idea. Um, if we have more time, we'll try experimenting with it more. But yeah, in print, 3D printed circuits, 6D printing. <laughs> Who knows? Anyways, let me know what you think. Keep in touch. Talk soon. Signing off. Adia.